Hello, and welcome to this course, Autotune Pro X Explained. This series is designed to give you everything that you need to know about the latest version of Autotune and how to use it in your productions. Antares Autotune is the industry standard for pitch correction and vocal processing. It can either be used as a really creative effect, which is heard in a lot of modern pop productions and also trap music, as well as for more subtle corrections on just about any style of vocal. When it's used subtly, it can really elevate a performance, and even if you're not really hearing any hard tuning effects on the audio, it can actually just really pull things together and just make them feel more cohesive. So I find it's very useful on just about any style of vocal, even if you don't work in pop music or trap music that really hard tunes the vocals, you can actually use it on acoustic tracks, singer-songwriter tracks, or even country records as well, just to pull the vocals together to make them feel a little bit more cohesive. The nice thing about this new version of Autotune, Autotune Pro X, is that it's natively compatible with Apple Silicon. So if you have the more advanced Apple computers, now it can run on those new computer processors, which just means that you could have more vocal tracks in your DAW and more instances of Autotune without having to freeze everything, which if you've used Autotune in the past, you know it could be a real issue whenever you're working on larger projects because Autotune is very CPU intensive. So this is a super nice new feature if you have one of the newer Mac computers. So as far as how this course is designed, it's designed around these various different sections of the Autotune plugin. So you can think of this as almost like a video manual of sorts. So feel free to skip around if you'd like. In this first video, we're gonna cover some of the presets and global controls in the plugin, but you can feel free to skip around and use this course as you need. So if you wanna go ahead and focus on the graph mode, you could jump to that first, or you could use the auto mode first. Feel free to skip around depending on what you need to learn. So let's go ahead and open up a copy of the Autotune Pro plugin. This is the interface that looks very similar to the previous versions, a little bit more minimal and a bit flatter of an interface, but we've got some really nice advanced features which make our vocal tuning effects a lot better. So there's two main modes on Autotune Pro. Each style provides a different type of tuning based on the type of pitch editing you're needing to do on your audio. So auto mode, which is this main interface that we can see here, that's gonna be used for automatic tuning effects. So this is used on a lot of modern hip hop vocals or pop records. We also have the graph editor, which is available over here. And this is used for really finite tuning. So it's almost like Melodyne in a lot of ways where you can take individual notes and adjust their placement in terms of what the pitch is playing. It's almost like a MIDI sequencer, but for your vocal recordings. So you scan in the audio and then you can go through and adjust vibrato or the different pitches of the notes or even timing of the notes. And this gives you a lot of detailed control of your audio. We'll jump into this in the later part of the course because this is a bit more advanced. You wanna understand how everything works first. So the first thing that we can do with this interface is we can actually resize this to any size that we need. So let's say I have a larger screen or I wanted to make this a bit larger. I could go ahead and drag this over here on the bottom and that's just gonna resize that interface. So if I had multiple plugin windows opened up, I can make it smaller and have this next to my compressor EQ plugins. Or if I wanna make this a bit larger, so it's just a bit easier to see, I can go ahead and drag that and it will get larger. The cool thing is the auto mode and graph mode can actually be scaled at different sizes. So you can go ahead and hit graph and then you can go ahead and drag this. We can make this really large, make this interface a bit larger and easier to see because there's a bit more details here. And I swap over to auto mode and it go ahead and changes that over. By the way, you can see right now I have these tooltips enabled where I hover over sections and it gives me a little bit of information about them. To go ahead and disable that, all you have to do is go up to these settings here and I go ahead and, and enable or disable view tooltips. That's just the preference over here. I'll go ahead and disable that so we don't have a bunch of pop-ups as we're working on these videos, but by default that is enabled and I think whenever you're kind of learning the plugin for the first time, it could be super helpful to leave that on. The next thing that Autotune Pro has that's super nice is a collection of featured presets that are available from the preset browser. So we can go up to this section over here and this gives us the ability to scroll through these presets. So if I click on this, you can see there's some save and delete options for your own custom user presets. And then down here on the bottom, we have the Autotune Pro Factory plugin presets and a couple of different selected artist presets available as well. These are super nice if you're just working on a session, you're tracking an artist and you wanna just get a quick Autotune effect, you can go ahead and select these, let's say hard Autotune effect, for example. It'll give me that classic hard tune auto effect that you hear on a lot of pop records. If I made the custom changes to this and wanted to save them, so now you can see there's this little asterisk here letting me know that this, has, this preset has been edited, I can go ahead and click on that and hit save as. I can give this a preset name. It's going to put it into the user. We can just call it my preset. Hit OK. And then you can now see it's saved to my preset, and now it is under this user tab. We also have the ability to favorite our favorite options here. So let's say I like this preset. I can go ahead and show favorites. We can go to user, it shows my preset, 
where you can even get the factory presets and select our favorites from there. We'll go ahead and just turn that off for now. But that's super nice, especially if you find a couple of presets you really like, especially if you're tracking a vocalist, you can go ahead and set your favorites and then you just quickly jump to those whenever you're recording someone. Now, before we jump into more of the presets, I want to go ahead and make a brief note about how to get that trap auto-tune sound. There's a lot of vocalists are looking for that in the studio. They want to have that modern trap vocal sound that's very synthetic and very heavily auto-tuned, much like Travis Scott or any of those other artists kind of in that genre. Um, and it's important to note that that's actually a method of singing. So it's not just the auto-tune settings. The artist actually has to sing super flat in order for the auto-tune to create that effect. So you actually need to sing the right note, just the flat version of it, and let the auto-tune hard snap that to the right pitch. So I recommend just having your vocalist practice with the auto-tune enabled where they can hear it in their headphones, because they actually have to change the way that they sing in order to get that extremely synthetic modern trap vocal sound. So not just about the right settings, it's actually about the way that that artist is singing. So just an important thing to note, as you're scrolling through presets, if your auto-tune doesn't sound quite right and you're going for that style, make sure that you're actually singing intentionally flat, so that way it hard snaps it to the right pitch and gives you that ultra-synthetic modern trap vocal. And then back to the presets, we have these other options here depending on what we want. We can delete our user presets as well, which could be super nice if we just create a bunch of presets you no longer want them, you can go ahead and delete them. Or you can use this to scan through the various different presets quickly to just find something you like. Or you can even hit this dice icon, and it'll just give you a random preset, which can be super fun if you're just trying to come up with new ideas or different types of creative vocal effects. You can just go ahead and hit this. It'll cycle through presets randomly, and you could find something interesting. The cool thing is it'll actually keep your different pitch settings. So let's say we have our key set. Let's see, we're in D minor. We'll cover this later. But if I go ahead and scroll through these, it's not changing the scale. It keeps all my scale information the same and just scrolls through the various different presets. So that's super nice because then you don't have to worry about manually changing that every time you swap a preset. It just automatically changes it so that way you can easily work with everything. Let's go ahead and put this back to its user default preset. Let's go back to the default. And then we can go ahead and talk a little bit about some of these global controls along the top. So in each of the individual videos, we'll actually dive into these different parts individually. But I want to go ahead and talk about some of these controls along the top that you'll find, just so you know how to use them, because we'll kind of be referring to them, especially the undo and stuff, a little bit later. So the first one is going to be this one over here, Antares Central. If you click on this, it's going to go ahead and pop up the Antares Central application that's used to manage your licenses and your activations, and also your updates and everything. So if you need to update the plugin or you need to check a license, go ahead and just click on this. It'll just quickly open that up. And then you can go ahead and grab your licenses as needed. For now, I won't click on that because we don't need to pull up my licenses, but that's what's happening on the left side of the plugin. Then we have this view next to it, which is the multi view list. This is helpful if you have a ton of different tracks for AutoTune Pro X running at the same time. This lets you quickly switch between the different single windows in the plugins. So that way you could quickly jump between your chorus vocal and your verse vocal and check settings or compare them or adjust them without having to individually click through the tracks inside of Ableton. So let me go ahead and just duplicate this to show you what's happening here. Let's call this a uh, hook vocal. And then call this verse vocal. So now we can go ahead and open up our hook vocal. And you can see that now it is labeled hook vocal. So it's actually pulling the track name information, which is super helpful. You don't have to manually name your auto tune. It just pulls that from your DIW. But if I click on this, now you can see my verse vocal. And I can swap between those two. And that's actually swapping the plugin. So let's say the hook vocal had a really hard retune speed with no vibrato. And I wanted to go to my verse. You can see now I can easily just swap between those. So this is super helpful, especially when you're working on larger sessions. You can just quickly jump between all your vocal auto tune settings without having to click through all your individual tracks. Then on the right hand side, we have these undo and redo commands. You can also use command or control Z to undo as well. So you can use the key commands that kind of remain standard, most are DAWs. Just make sure that you're selected into the plugin so you don't actually undo something inside your DAW. But you can use these to quickly undo or redo different commands. And the nice thing is you actually have up to 99 steps of undo, which can be super helpful, especially if you're wanting to go back to where your settings were previously and then go in and adjust them. And then just hit the redo if you want to go ahead and redo your changes. Then we have the settings icon. This is this gear icon, which is basically going to enable the quick settings. So if I click on this, you see there's this quick settings pop up and gives me access to some information like the tooltips, which we talked about a little bit earlier. These are the main preferences that you'll kind of toggle on and off as you're working with the software quite often. If you want to jump into the full preferences in the software, that's going to be selected from this menu option right here. 
We'll go ahead and cover the quick settings and then also the more advanced preferences in the next video, so don't worry about those for now. Then we have the bypass control, which will just bypass the AutoTune plugin. So if I wanted to bypass the settings that I have on AutoTune Pro, I just hit this and it bypasses the plugin, turns it off. And then I can go ahead and turn that back on and it's going to go ahead and turn back on my plugin. So that's all for this quick intro to the presets and kind of global controls on AutoTune Pro. From here, we'll start diving into some of these more advanced menu options and how to set this plugin so that way we can actually start tuning a vocal. So thanks for checking out this video. I'll see you in the next one.